Yes, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Daily Dose podcast. Today, we have yet another very special guest, someone I've been excited to get on the show. This guy has put on some of the best performances that we've seen from an international in the UK for a very long time. One of iBattle's finest, Red Flag. What's going on, man? Hey, thanks for having me, brother. No worries, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on, man. But jumping straight into the questions because we 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 might end up getting pushed for time here. But like with yourself, like how did you get into battle rap originally? Well, originally it goes way back to I think probably even predating high school or very early high school. Um, just being aware that you know I'm from Baltimore originally. So being aware that, you know, rap battles took place and, you know, that they were a thing. But one of my earliest memories, and I don't exactly remember the year. Um, did y'all have Blockbuster in the UK? The DVD rental. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. Out of business for a long time, obviously. But it used to be a staple, you know, in pretty much every neighborhood in the United States. And I had one, you know, real close to my house. And, you know, I'm lived in in you know baltimore city so they would kind of cater to the local tastes and there was actually a uh, a rack right at the front of the store that would always have you know hip-hop vhs's dvds whatever and there was smack dvd there one day and i saw one of the first one of the first ever like sit down to watch battle rap experiences was was from that i don't know what year it was but a long time ago and then you know from that it just kind of kept up with it and you know it was getting more and more organized so like when I was in college and stuff you know around the 09 kind of time period I wasn't paying as much attention to like the grind time era but I was definitely enjoying what I saw and then you know as stuff got even more organized in New York you know and then King of the Dot came out and all that stuff I was I was real tuned in from then on uh had worked for battlerap.com for a while um for those of y'all who remember that site. And then, okay. you know, eventually made the transition to battling, but I'm sure we'll get into that. Nice. I didn't realize you worked for battlerap.com. That's cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many people it. realize that. Um, I was the guy who would, I would go to pretty much every event, major event in New York. And uh, I would not only do the live tweets, uh, which probably what most people would know me for from that, but then I would, you know, I would write long form pieces on the site too, which unfortunately that site's, you know, not active anymore. But it was a good time in battle rap when uh, the written word was was thriving, if you can believe that. I don't think we really have a major outlet like that anymore. No, I don't think we do, unfortunately. Like the <laughs> the only guy really that was that's doing that nowadays is uh young crumpet and his live updates, but yeah, right. Yeah, I know him. I met him a couple times actually. Yeah, yeah. He's. Um, I, I personally, I've tried to do it at events when he's not been there, and I just, I normally get about one battle in and give up on the whole idea. To be honest, but it's I don't exhausting. Know how he does man. it? It's, yeah. I don't know how I used to. I would stand at a URL event, you know, for nine hours, you know, just smoking weed, not moving, you know, just on the phone, like updating. Up, Twitter it was like I don't know how I'd, and somehow still like enjoying the battles fun times though that yeah was a cool period yeah fair play to you man I know I can't do it anyway but yeah that's that's cool I, did, I never realized that you uh you work for them that's that's amazing I used to love that site too it was I uh, appreciate kind of the that go-to. man but, yeah battle rap Chris he's you know just out there doing his thing just in a different field uh great guy miss working with him what, what's he up to nowadays then I I believe, um, and I don't want to misspeak, but I believe that he's working for a, a cannabis company. He's in Canada, um, and I believe right around the time that it like got, you know, federally legalized up there, he, I don't know if that's what they call it in Canada, but Canada legalized it, you know, across the whole country. And I think around that time he switched over to a company. I think he's like writing for them, like doing similar kind of stuff. Oh, amazing! Good for him, yeah. but. Uh... Yeah, man. I mean, and like for yourself, so you you jumped into battling around about 2017 then, and your your first battle was Dale Denton. Is that right? That's right. Actually, I'm, that was my first official one, but I was supposed to battle this dude, uh, Bill Blaze, who actually has his own league now. Um, 
ECCM, it's called. I think they just did a merger with No Coast recently. Um, but that ended up falling through a couple times. Um, and the second time it fell through, I just said, yo, Lex, like, can you just stand here and like, let me get my bars off? And I got like a, you know, really good reception, which was completely unexpected. It's like to this day, some of the most explosive cloud re- uh, crowd reaction I've ever gotten. Like, you know, some of my biggest moments are still from that first battle that most people haven't even seen. I think you have to search something like red flag gets his bars off for, for Bill Blaze or something like that. But that was my first like in the ring experience. So then by the time I got to Dale Denton, which was my first official battle that I knew I wasn't going to get no showed for, uh, it was like, I kind of had some confidence already, which was an interesting way to, to start. Definitely. No, that's, that's cool, man. And uh, yeah, it's a shame that Bill Blaze battle didn't go ahead. I guess I've had Bill on the show as well. And I wasn't aware of that, but, yeah, yeah I mean, it, was, it was a long time ago. I don't really know what, what went on, but it doesn't matter. It all worked out for the best. Yeah, and the Dale Denton battle, man, is amazing. Like Just watching you two guys, like obviously you've both become key figures in eye battle in that sense, and with yourself, you're that. now kind of all over. You're, you're a bit of a globe trotter at the moment in that sense. But Right, yeah, it's crazy. I, I can't believe that either. I appreciate that. It's been it's been fun to watch, man. And like for me personally, I think right now I battle is the it's it's the league that I follow the most. Like it's just it, it, the atmosphere. Yeah, a lot of people. Events, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, it it just looks incredible. And you know, once this is uh, once this pandemic is over, I need to get over there and experience Absolutely. an event. But what was it that drew you. you to I battle? Well. The I Battle connection is interesting because I was always a fan of the league. You know, it's it was under completely different management several years ago. A dude named Logic uh, ran it, and he did some amazing things with the league. Like, there's big matchups on there, and there was a you know some homegrown guys. That's where the era that you know Bangs and E Farrell are from. All those dudes. Um, but by the time I got involved with battle rap, which was like a hundred percent through Lex Luthor, like he's the only reason I started, he's, you know, he gave me the opportunity, he brought it up. And right, right around that time, he messaged me and was like, we're actually doing like a big, like we just, we bought iBattle. That's going to be, you know, your league now. It was Beast Mode in New York originally, which is, you know, not, not an operation anymore. Beast Mode in Canada is still going strong, but. Right. And it, because I battle originally, so it was... was more like I just ended up on I battle. So it was, yeah, it was owned by um, this guy Logic, and then you know it was dormant for a while, and then Lex brought it back, and I just happened to be like right, you know, right around that time I had started battling. So it was just really lucky. But that said, like from you know, if looking at I battle as it exists today, I would a hundred percent be drawn towards that just because of the variety of stuff that's going on. You, you go to an iBattle event and if you don't know the names on the card or you, maybe you're not that familiar, you really have no idea what you're going to get. You know, you're going to see some like, you know, kind of URL style, like more street oriented battles. You're going to see some completely like comedic battles. You're going to see like, you know, style clashes because Lex loves setting those up. It's just, you know, it's a fun variety. It's a pack of weirdos. That's why we love it over there. It's like, you know, if you're like, off the beaten path of battling in any way like that's a place you could thrive and if you're just like an all-around traditional solid battler like you'll also thrive there that's that's what i love about it it's very accepting you know very exciting atmosphere the vibe is you know can't be can't be imitated anyone who's been to an i-battle event will tell you that yeah and it it comes across on cam as well man it looks incredible but yeah i mean like I battle before Lex kind of took over. It was, it wasn't really based in New York as much, was it? No, uh, it was based in Connecticut, you know, which is not far away. But it was like a very, and it was a really cool part of the brand. It was like a, you know, a whole area of battle rap that was, you know, really being highlighted and had like a, all these interesting voices. Um, but we, you know, a lot of those guys are still fairly active, you know, in the New York locations too. I know there's been talk of like doing a throwback, you know, event and taking it back to Connecticut. Um, I've never been to a battle event in Connecticut personally, but it would be cool. Definitely. Yeah, man. And then, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun, a fun time to watch since Lex took over. Like I wasn't, I wasn't overly familiar with iBattle before that, if I'm honest, but 
yeah, since yeah. that point, it just it, Lex has definitely brought some some pretty uh, entertaining energy to it. You know, he's always he's always working, always making stuff happen. You know, he's put all these quarantine battles together. You know, he's that dude. Definitely, but for yourself, like you, you've done a number of battles now, and I'm sure that you you've got a favorite battle for for different reasons, but. If I was to say, like, what's your favorite battle personally that you've been a part of? What do you think you'd go with? Man, it's a really tough question, and I'm, I'm going to qualify it in the exact way that you just uh, forecasted there to say, like, I do have different favorites for different reasons. But probably, like, the overall, like, dopest experience uh, was probably the Apex battle versus Raptor. Just, you know, I was under that battle came out of nowhere. First of all, you know, I was like two weeks notice. And as that card was like, you know, desperately and, and expertly, I might add being rebuilt, you know, I got to be part of that. So that came out of nowhere. It was a surprise. I, I happened to be like as busy with work as I ever have been, you know, just working stupid hours, like literally taking 15 minute breaks to write. And somehow it all came together, you know, finishing on the plane, you know, barely getting any sleep, but like having a great time hanging out with the, you know, group of guys that came over with me from the States and like all of that together just culminated on being on that stage and just trying shit I had never done before, freestyling like crazy, like feeding off the energy of the crowd, which was the biggest crowd I had been in front of. All those things and the fact that Raptor went crazy too. I got to say that's my favorite one. I get that, man. And like, it's, it's, is it your first time going overseas i know you've been to canada but is it your first yeah, time yeah that like... was yeah it's it's man it's so obnoxious i was about to go it's i've kind of lost track let me think but like and i'm not trying to sound like a douchebag but there have been so many more than i ever expected but yes and now i'm thinking about it that was the first time flying over an ocean for about a rap i've been to canada before that but yeah nice yeah and it was unfortunate well not really unfortunately but i i missed the apex event um but I got to watch yourself versus Raptor while sat on a beach in Thailand. So, oh yeah, I was going to say yeah, that's but, that's a pretty good alternative. Yeah, but the for me personally, like the what they pulled off with that event and the card that they rebuilt was, I I much preferred it to the original card personally. So yeah, it was it, it was amazing how they pulled it together. I mean. The group of dudes that they brought over, you know, Chilla, A Ward, Real Deal, you know, couldn't have been a more solid squad. Mad Flex, how could I forget? Couldn't have been a more solid group to like, you know, be consistent and like, you know, be dedicated. I mean, people never heard A Ward's bars either for shocks, and they were crazy. I can imagine. Yeah, Yeah. it's a, it's a shame that that didn't go ahead, but. It, it didn't seem like it dampened the event at all. Like everybody, oh, no, the energy no. in that room was incredible. So That's I'm really cool. like, I, I was just over the moon for them that they were able to pull that off. If I'm honest, it looked incredible, but yeah. yeah I'm, I'm grateful I was able to be part of it. And you versus Raptor, I mean, it's got to be battle of the night for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I try as hard as I can to like get that every time. I, I mean, performance of the night is hard to get, you know, and a lot of times when that happens, it's because, you know, the opponent wasn't up to par and you just absolutely smoke them. And I, I don't, I don't find myself in that situation very often. So I just gun for like, I know people are usually writing their best shit for me. So I just try to get that battle of the night every time. And usually, you know, it's got a pretty good track record with that, which is, you know, one thing I'm real proud of. But that's, you know, I owe that to my opponents, of course. That's not even really, you know, my accomplishment. No, I see what you mean. But, yeah, I mean, the me, like, for me personally, I know it's probably quite high debated, but I think I think I do have you edge in Raptor as well. Um, I appreciate that. I mean, yeah, it's debatable. Go either way. A lot, a lot of my battles are like that. Like I said, like, people are just, you know, it ends up being real competitive most of the time, which is dope. Definitely. But, yeah, it's incredible battle man and i i wasn't i really wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was because it was only was it only booked about three weeks before the battle i think it was about maybe 16 days out or something like that it's like crazy time crunch yeah 
Definitely. And I remember seeing in the first few days, like I was still just trying to catch up with work and like even get my mind in a position where I could write. And I was just seeing Raptor be like, oh, already a round done. You know, he was just so in the zone. And I was, man, I was a lot to, uh, to go into unfamiliar territory with all that. But, man, worked out as well as I could have hoped. Yeah, man. And, like, with, with your resume as a whole, like, you've, you've really come up against, like, a lot of my, my personal favorites as well. Like, the, the battles that you've been selected for have been... Like you, you're really lucky with your resume in that sense, because thank you, thank you, man. That's another thing that I'm, you know, I and I owe a lot of that to Lex too. He's like, not only did he book dope battles for me, but he, you know, taught me how to like scope out the best ones that are really gonna, you know, age well and you know, just look good on paper. Like you said, like I'm, I'm real grateful for that too. I, I like to, <laughs> I like to go on Burst Tracker every now and then and just see, you know, all the different shit I've been lucky enough to do. I think every battler secretly does that. No, of course, yeah, no, I, I get that, and it's, yeah, it's been incredible, man. I've, I've, I've been, I don't, I haven't actually. So there's most of the people that I've had on the show, I've kind of, I've missed some of their older battles along the way, and had to go back and watch them years later. But I, I went through your verse tracker to see if there was anything that I had missed, and. I'd seen every battle of yours so far. Oh, that's, so cool, it's, man. that's good to hear. You've yeah. been tuned in. There was quite a few, like, most of the, the guys I've spoke to from iBattle, like, any any battles that they did before iBattle, I'd missed and things like that. But Right, right. Yeah, yeah I'm just kind of like, I'm homegrown in that way. You know, I've gotten some really cool opportunities from that. But, you know, if you my battles don't get that old. So if you've been paying any kind of attention, there's, there's a lot to see within the last couple of years. Definitely. Yeah, man, it's been amazing. But would you, would you say you've got a least favorite battle that you've been a part of so far? Least favorite battle. That's interesting. Well, a good thing is that nothing immediately comes to mind for that. Oh, you know, there was like, you know, I won't say it's the worst at all. And I think it like turned out great, but like something I would probably do differently um my fourth battle ever was supposed to be uh a class and you know no need to go into details but he no showed on some on some nonsense you know and just had no intention of doing the battle you know it wasn't going to tell us till the day of so in that stage of your career i think there's a lot of battlers would think this way you know you're so ready to like you know have that opportunity and you you wrote this shit that you think is your best shit and you're so desperate to get it off that when you hear you're getting no-showed, like, sometimes your first instinct might be like, oh, how can I salvage this? Instead of being like, all right, let me not waste this material. Let's, like, take some time, think how I can, you know, solve the situation. But I wasn't on that that night. That was the same night that Bangs uh, was supposed to battle Pat's day. I don't know if people know that that was going to happen, but Pat had issues at the border. Battle wasn't able to take place. So me and Bangs, you know, were without opponents. So I kind of... I remember it being me who was like pushing to be like, let's just, you know, stand in for each other and see what we can do. And Banks was like, you know, I'm just going to smoke you on some freestyle shit. I don't even really, you know, he didn't really want to do it, but I was kind of pushing him to. And then, you know, we had a cool back and forth, but it just ends up being kind of like a weird, it's like a bit of a weird battle to watch back because like Bangs is just freestyling and being like mad entertaining. But then like, you know, there's not really – his rounds don't really like correspond correspond with mine, like subject matter wise. So it ended up just being kind of weird. Got me a lot of views and, you know, people were like saying nothing but good things in the comments, which is dope, but just like a dumb way to solve a situation. Like, I don't think I would do that now. I think, you know, if I was supposed to battle somebody and I had good shit for them, I would either, you know, try to reschedule it or, you know, see if I could make a smarter use than just pretending somebody else is them, you know, but, even then, I don't think it turned out badly. So I, I see what you mean. And like, so I was actually thinking about this earlier. So, so Sweeney brought this up on the episode that I did with him. Um, and he, he mentioned that like you got no showed and then Pat couldn't make it to battle bangs. And that's how you two battled. And he said that you kind of came up to him at the event and was like, should I do this? Right. And yeah. Then... I think um 
I definitely remember being unsure of it, but then I know like just that in my mind the whole time I was so like eager and it, which is the dumb part. You know, I remember being like, I just gotta like, I gotta say this shit. But like, that's the, that's the thing that battlers should realize, especially when they're first starting out. It's like, you're going to get no showed and shit like that all the time. So, you know, you don't want to have like a hasty reaction to it, but yeah. you know, it could have gone, could have gone way worse. Obviously. Like I'm not mad at the overall product. It did net me like way more views than a class would have no doubt about that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And like, I, I watched that battle quite a f- I think probably about three times. I love it. And then oh, to, wow, hear, dope, man. to hear Sweeney kind of say that, you came up to him at, a, at an event, asked if you should do it, and then 20 minutes later, you were like, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm yeah, sorry. it was weird. I, I, was, I was just thinking, like, am I going to – I couldn't decide if I should really try to make major adjustments to it or kind of just go and, like, try to make it make sense. So I just sort of did that. And, you know, luckily it was like, you know, I put a lot into the writing. It all would hit way harder if it, you know, was – the man who was written for him was standing in front of me, but you know, it is what it is. Prez Mafia jumped in. <laughs> yeah. Crazy yeah. Yeah. It's a great battle. Well, I love it. But I mean, Bangs is, is one of those people though that, I mean, he could probably freestyle three rounds and it'd be oh, yeah. decent. And he has, and he's, in, he's incredible. And that's my man too. Shout out to Bangs. Like I'm so Everybody in, in I Battle and in Battle Rap in general who's seen him live is like so utterly amazed by the shit that he can do freestyle. I mean, his pen is sick too when he feels like doing that, but he really doesn't need to. He genuinely is the type of dude who will like write stuff in his head live as he's saying it, and it's like way sharper, you know, than, than something people sit down with for two weeks for, you know? Yeah, no, definitely, man. And then, um, like, out of you know, you're you're lucky enough now to have been to events in what's it? Is it is it four countries now? Let's see, I guess it's you know the U.S., Canada, uh, Ireland, and England. I believe. Yeah, I think that's it. Nice. But so, yeah, it's, which is wild to think about. Yeah, but what would you say is the the best battle that you've seen live? Oof, man. See, okay, so. Does that include all the time with uh, BattleRap.com? Yes. When I was there in a different role? Yeah. Okay. Best battle I've seen live. Man, that's tough. Um, well, you know, I th- I'm trying to just go with things that, you know, come to mind because that's the best way to answer these questions, I feel like. But I won't say it's held up as, like, the best battle out of all the ones I've seen live, if that makes sense. But – being front and center for um, Iron Solomon versus Disaster was just a crazy experience. Like, I mean, anyone who'll tell you, like, if you've seen Disaster, like, whether or not, I know, you know, he's a super polarizing dude, and, you know, I don't always love his battles either, but if you've seen him live, that energy is, like, on some other shit, and, you know, obviously he was going crazy in that battle. I didn't love his uh, Hitler mustache, but aside from that, it was, you know, a great back and forth, and just seeing that, like, such a I mean, you hear that matchup, you know, that you could have heard that matchup in 2009 and it would have sounded, you know, colossal. And then just to see it, you know, whatever it was, six, seven years later, was just a dope experience. But I've seen so many great battles, man, I, honestly. Uh, the fucking uh, NWX versus gun titles when that first happened. Is that what it's called? Gun titles? Yeah. Surf and Rock versus uh, DNA and K-Shine, even though it, like, got broken up. Like, the shit that we saw surf and rock do that night was insane. Like just another level of chemistry. And, you know, the, that venue was about to explode. Like it was almost good that that, you know, that battle didn't get to finish, but yeah, I've seen so many good ones, man. It's, it's impossible to pick. No, that's, it's a good list as well. And like, yeah, like even the gun titles match, like I've said this a lot. Like I've never been a Tay rock fan pretty much whatsoever, but that is, that was something else to be fair. Right. That, that right. Yeah. And I, I know he's got a complex relationship with, uh, with the UK and, uh, you know, I had some pretty direct involvement with remedying that situation. So I get all that, but yeah, that was, that was just something else to see. It was a phenomenon. Do you know what? It doesn't actually play a part for me in why I don't like it. I've never really that's been good. a yeah, fan. Um, I just, 
I don't find like I don't feel like he says anything. It's just purely his performance and like Yeah, a lot of people have been, you know, have been have felt that way for a long time. I do think that like his pen is not his his strongest attribute. I, I do like a lot of the shit he writes, but yeah, his energy with Surf is just what, you know, that that was on a different level. Yeah. And he he might fall under the same category that I put Charlie Clips in like I never liked Charlie Clips either and then I saw right. him live and it completely changed my opinion yeah just his projection and room. his like engagement yeah yeah but it's a no it's a, a great list to be fair and yeah i'm sure you've seen plenty of incredible battles down the years as well but like one one question that i've been asking people which is it's brought up some interesting answers so far but if you had to pick a list for yourself of five battles that you want in the near future, who makes that list for you? Oof, I don't know if I'll come up with five, but that's yeah, that's a tough one. Um, let me think. So, man, who's it's it's weird too because I've been trying to keep up with these video battles, but it's hard to like get a sense of like who's really like hitting the stride right now. But I mean, I've liked everything I've seen. So let me think about that. Um, I think, uh, just on some random shit, I think me and like Jay Murder would rap, uh, would match up well. I like, like the more aggressive style as my opponent that I can, you know, figure out a strategy around that. I think that would be a dope battle. Uh, there's been like times when like me and drugs have been talked about. <laughs> that sentence sounds crazy out of context, but drugs with a Z. <laughs> I think that would be another dope one. Um, I definitely like, I kind of am due for a kind of battle like that where like I'm less, you know, I've, I've been battling uh, like Johnny Darko is like re- real well-rounded, but he's like a real, uh, he does like angle based punchlines and stuff like that. But sometimes it's fun to, you know, just battle somebody who's more about just like, you know, regular kind of just general aggressive, violent, you know, just intense energy kind of shit that I, you know, I, I think I match up well against those and it's been a while. So those would be two examples of that kind of style. I think would be dope. Um, man, I don't know. It's I, I rely on other people so much to like, tell me what I should do next. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that is a good idea. And sometimes it's not always a good idea, but it's hard for me to like, I don't know if I have like a hit list like that right now. I definitely wanted to battle Danny Myers and I, I got to do that in the quarantine format, which was dope. So yeah. like, that's a, that's a cool one to, you know, just, I, I respect Danny a lot, but at the same time, you know, I was itching to make fun of him about a few things and <laughs> got to do that. So I don't know, man, you tell me I, if, if you have any other suggestions, like I'm, I'm always excited to hear, you know, what other people think about it. Um, but so, yeah, I'm feeling pretty satisfied right, right now at the moment, but you know, yeah, I appreciate that. And um, I, I've said this to a lot of people. Briggs is one of them, so hopefully they uh, they try and get this sorted. But the the main thing that I would like to see personally as a fan is an I Battle versus UK event. Oh yeah, yeah. I know there's been talks of that. I mean, man, if that were to happen, like in that kind of format, uh, here here uh, this will help to fill out the five. In that kind of format, if that were to happen, like a dream battle there would be like a soul, you know, somebody like that who I know is just like the most dangerous person, you know, in terms of just like deconstructing your character and just crafting a heavy angle that's like got all these punchlines and references in it. Like soul is terrifying like that. Like that's the kind of battle, you know, I would want to push myself for. So that's another one, you know, I don't know. I mean... I know that sounds like a lofty goal, but, you know, I never thought that I would battle, like, a name as big as a Raptor in the UK in front of all those people. So anything's possible, I guess. I mean, I, I basically got asked on the iBattle forum to put together a two-day card of UK versus iBattle, and it took me probably about two minutes to think up of about 16 matches. Oh, yeah. There are so and... many good ones, man. So many. I personally put you against Soul as well. That's it's oh, what wow. I want to see the most. Oh, I feel validated. Thank you, bro. No, I, it it needs to happen, man. I think it'd be incredible. And yeah, I'd, I don't know if you really like if I'm really on the radar for him. I met him briefly uh, at Apex. Seems like a cool guy. Um, but yeah, I know he's not one to play with. Definitely. Um, I mean, 
I know you guys obviously get on, so I don't know if you'd be up for it, but I'd also really like to see you against Mad Flex. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, you're exactly right. Like that is my guy, and that would be tough for that reason. But that's another like dope challenge. Like nobody sounds like Mad Flex. Like you don't really know what he's gonna do. Sometimes he just has like really unorthodox like interesting rhyme patterns that just make him hard to beat in that way other times he like does have a real heavy angle so definitely a big fan of him i've heard that one a lot too wouldn't be high on my list for the reason you said but you know if the if the circumstances were right i'm sure i would agree to it no no that makes sense and i mean just in terms of like the eye battle roster itself i think you versus sean oh sean would be crazy Oh, you know, I'm a jerk because there was a time where, you know, I could have done that. Um, I was like a little bit too busy to really make it work, but that has been floated before. And I do, I definitely do think he is one of the, you know, one of the best rising talents on, on iBattle. He's had like ups and downs, but when he's on like his battle versus real sick is incredible. Um, and he's got a couple of like bodies that, you know, I don't know how many people have seen, but yeah, Sean is dope. Yeah, incredible, man. But yeah, and like the the next battle rap related question, it is the one that people have found the hardest to answer, to be honest. But Oh boy, all right. If you were a promoter and you were putting together an event which you had unlimited funds for, what are you putting on the card? Like, what battles do you want to see most? Man, that's tough. Unlimited funds. So, I know, how, like, a lot of people might hear unlimited funds and they immediately think, like, all right, what's the biggest possible name? But where my mind is going is people who, like, have not come back to battle rap, even though everybody wants to see them come back. And, like, everybody's got a price. If they're paying stupid money, I'm trying to think, who would I be first to bring back? Well, I'll keep that in the back of my mind and I'll think of more, you know, immediate answers. I would definitely want to see another big battle for Pat Stay. I'm just trying to think who that should be because I think uh, Pat's one of the most dangerous in the world right now. And yeah. <clears throat> if there's going to be an event, you know, on a massive scale, I definitely think he should be involved with it. So I'm trying to think who has he not battled, who he needs to. <clears throat> I mean... Yeah, that's tough. I, I would love to see like a Pat and Shoddy rematch where they're like actually the circumstances are right and you know they just forget that first battle ever even happened. Yeah. And they just do that. That would be sick. Like I don't know. I mean that that's definitely an expensive one right there. Um how many battles are on this card? <laughs> so as a general rule, I've been saying eight, but that oh, is God, a struggle. Um man. So I gotta bring somebody major back to I'm thinking who who should that be? Not one of these people who, you know, hasn't been around for too, too long. But, man, I don't know. That's a tough-ass question, man. I got to keep thinking about that. We'll we'll keep thinking about people who are still out there killing it. Um, I, you got to have, you got to have, like, a Rum Nitty, a Rum Nitty battle on there. I would love to see, like, Rum Nitty versus Conceited. You know, people, will, like, shit on that matchup, and they think that Conceited would just get washed. But... And maybe that's right. I don't know. But I just kind of need to see, like, the errors of punchers face off. So that's another one. So Conceded, somebody who hasn't battled in forever, if the price is high enough, I'm sure he'll come back. So Conceded versus Rum Nitty. Uh, who else? I got to see, like, I got to see Av get, like, a huge battle on there, too. I would love to see, like, an Av versus, like, Murder Mook or something like that. Not even because I'm dying to see a Murder Mook battle, but just because I think Av is one of them guys who should, like, you know, he gets kind of pigeonholed a lot, you know? Like, he gets put in battles where he's supposed to just, you know, outpunch the other dude. But I think he would, you know, there's more to, you know, maybe that we haven't seen from him. I want to see, like, a bigger battle. So something like that. Maybe, like, Av versus Hollow or something like that. That would be sick. Nice. Um K-Shine is so entertaining. I need to see a, a huge K-Shine battle, too. I'm just trying to – he's battled so many people. I don't know. Maybe, like, a, a Pat, have, have Pat and K-Shine battled? Not yet, no. No, they haven't, right? I would love to see that. Maybe that – no disrespect to Shoddy. I thought the Pat matchup was maybe not the one for him anyway. But if I let me throw Shoddy back in there to make up for that. Shoddy versus – 
Uh, I mean, Shado, Shadi versus like somebody like Hollow would be sick. Um, I don't know. I mean, Shadi just needs. I need to see Shadi after that John John performance. I need to see him against another, you know, big U.S. name. I'm just not sure exactly off the top of my head who I who that needs to be, but definitely have him. So uh, Briggsy actually mentioned on the show the other day when I spoke to him that Tay Rock was actually a replacement for Lux. Oh yeah, yeah. He he mentioned that to me um, off the record <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, when he picked me up. He said that you know their negotiations didn't pan out, but apparently that that was in the air. I would love to see that. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, Loaded Lux is is amazing. I don't think he's invincible though. I know a lot of people see him as like the absolute final boss. I do think he can be and has been beaten, but um, definitely you know Shadi deserves a name of that caliber for sure. And you know he's never really you know he smashed every single opportunity he's had really. Records. I mean, this Charlie Clips battle isn't the best, but everything else, he's he's got to get another matchup like that. Yeah. No, I agree. So yeah, I don't know. That's that's probably the only ones I can name off like the top of my head. But and then you know, the, with cards like this, you would have to put some people who aren't like the you know at least one or two matchups of people who aren't like the top 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 tier names, just so they can you know get that push and you know take that next step in their career. I'm not sure who that would maybe be right now. You know, probably somebody. I don't know. I mean, again, I know, you know, a lot of people have a million issues with him, but when Twerk's in a huge battle, that shit can be pretty unbelievable too. I'd probably have to have him somewhere in there. If it's going to be, you know, the biggest card ever with the unlimited budget, I think it's only right. Yeah, makes sense. It is a difficult question as well. And I I do, I will say I like how you've kept it strictly battle rap as well, because a lot of people haven't and it's, Right, like, yeah. I started thinking, like, who are the people that I, I was talking about, like, bringing people back, but I don't even, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan, personally, of, like, this person battled in the past, and, you know, now they've got some kind of industry connection. Therefore, there has to be a huge demand for it. Like, I, I think sometimes that is the case. Like, Cassidy is, like, undeniable. Like, the demand is there. He's got so many diehard fans. But, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to put anybody down, name names, but I, I do think we we're a little, we cater to the industry a little bit too much, a little too readily. You know, it's not always going to pan out. And it very often doesn't pan out that well, you know? So I wouldn't go that route personally. No, I agree. Completely agree. And like the, I I was trying to think about that at the same time too. The only people really that I'd say I'd like to see back in terms of battlers that have previously battled in the States anyway, is like, I'd love to see Psychosis back. And Joe oh, yeah. Nye. Yeah, I would love to see him back. Joe and I too. Yeah, definitely. But apart from that, I was struggling to think of anyone, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. Like, it, it wouldn't, I don't think, you know, no disrespect to Joe and I whatsoever, but I don't know if, I, you know, the biggest card ever would be the place where I'd bring him back either. No, no, uh, agreed. Yeah, it's interesting those, that those, those two specifically, because they battled, and then if I'm not, and they bet on it, and Joe and I got the, the split decision, I believe. I think I was there, yeah. Um, and then I don't think we saw Psychosis anymore after that, right? No, I don't think we did. I'm pretty sure yeah, that was his crazy. last like, one. I hope he doesn't think, I really just hope he doesn't think that he needed to quit Battle Rap because he lost a decision. Like, even if it was like a big judge battle, like, <laughs> there's no way that he needed to not battle anymore after that. So I hope it's just because he didn't want to and not some, you know, some other shit. Same for Joe and I. So I can't remember what it was. I think it was like an intro to a a town business one battle, but Psychosis did a little video clip where he was saying like King of the Dot, I'll see you again soon, but it just huh. never seemed to to come about, unfortunately. But I get it. I mean there's a million different reasons that people, you know, just don't wanna battle anymore or, you know, whatever. So I'm not gonna pretend to know. I just hope that, you know, there's no way that people were like, Oh, he lost the decision. I don't ever want to see him battle again. He was he was fire. Like he was definitely like just heating up too. I'm actually gonna be speaking to him on the show tomorrow. So I'm gonna uh oh, there you go. Gonna try Tell and scope out what's going on. But I completely yeah. forgot until right now. But yeah got him on tomorrow which would be fun but so yeah i mean like with yourself as well so you're you also make a lot of beats and stuff um oh yeah 
you've recently dropped a new album as well is that right yeah man shit i was i almost forgot to plug that thank you so yeah i'm uh you probably heard me say like penultimate at the beginning of my battles um if you watch those but that's my group it consists of me uh a guy named bacon bear and a guy named will Skrills. so we all three rap on it and for the most part and a hundred percent of this album i made the beats uh so that's you know one of the things i spent a lot of my free time doing is just making beats i have you know hundreds that we haven't used for anything um and i don't know if we ever will but yeah we dropped an album it's called pretty good it is pretty good. It's on all platforms. Um, you just search penultimate, which is two words. It should come right up. And the album's called Pretty Good. It's everywhere. I've been getting a lot of uh, dope feedback on that, which I really appreciate. And we should have some cool uh, sort of media things lined up with that soon. I'll hopefully can start announcing those in the near future. Great. Yeah, I've, um, I, I've not got round to checking the new album, unfortunately, at the moment, but I plan no to worries, over the man. weekend. It's on the so. internet forever. <laughs> yeah, very true. But yeah, I'm gonna uh, gonna check it out over the weekend. And one of the things I'm hoping to do with this show, like my main goal, really is once I've built the subscribers up, I want to do a weekly show where I talk about battlers' music more. I feel oh, yeah, like it's dope, man. it's just criminally overlooked. There's so many battlers making great music, and I don't feel yeah. like too I know many it's a cliche to aware. say, but. Uh... I, I, it's it sounds stupid and it is such a cliche to say but this idea that battlers can't make music like that that it has like really hurt you know a lot of people's chances to catch anybody's interest because people just write want to write it off or they don't you know it's almost like it's cool to say that you know i'm not going to listen to that because y'all y'all got to just stay in your lane and then you'll turn around and like praise them for their battles that's like such a wild mindset it's like Somebody can rap, but like generally you're going to want to hear them rap in a different format. It's not going to ruin your day. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I do think that, you know, I get a lot of comments like, oh, shit, I didn't expect you to be this smooth on beat. But I think it, for me and a lot of people, it's like we did that first. You know, you like you rap on a beat first. You know, you're in middle school or whatever, like rapping over an instrumental or trying to. And like that's for a lot of people – that's where it comes from. So it's natural. Like, of course you should listen to the music. It's probably going to be good. You know, and so many battlers make incredible music. Ryder makes incredible music. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Eddie I obviously makes amazing music. Mac, so many. Definitely. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, I just feel like, like back in the day with Don't Flop, especially like anyone that battled on Don't Flop, you'd see them, Ur would introduce them and they'd immediately start plugging a mixtape or yeah, an yeah. album or whatever. And it's it's kind of just been lost in that sense. So Yeah, we do have a new generation of like some people at least that really don't, you know, don't ever try to rap until they want to do it in the battle format. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I just wish like more fans would remember like, yo, like a lot of these battlers that I enjoy watching like probably have some kind of musical sensibility like i should probably check their shit out and not assume that you know that's just dumb i think that i think that image is going away though i think a lot of battlers are kind of waking people up to that yeah and these like ruin your day tapes are gonna help yeah. and all that yeah that's why it was funny i didn't even mean to say ruin your day before but yeah like I'm <laughs> obviously like so many things in the culture, he's like, you know, been put one of the main people pushing that, which is dope. I think those are, I, I'll definitely try to get on one of those eventually. Um, so that's a, that's another goal. But yeah, it's like a dope little community of like a real, like diverse mix of styles in that, in those tapes too. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. It'd be great to see you on one of those, man. But um, something I to mean, shoot for. Down to the, the, the important questions now, but like, when are we gonna? It's been teased for a long time. When are we getting this red flag and canal two on two? Oh shit! Yeah, I don't know, man. Whenever, really. There's we've been offered like a couple like little random things that um were gonna be like sort of in between stops uh, while we were both in um, Shrewsbury for uh, don't flop, but we ended up. But we thought there was there wasn't going to be enough time to do that, so we haven't really been offered anything like a legitimate like two on. Not that it was illegitimate, you know. I, we haven't been offered a standalone two on two battle yet, so definitely ready to do that whenever. I think like 
that's a blend of styles that would just be hilarious because like we're, we're super different in the way we approach shit. Like I tend to be like super rehearsed and like try to hit every word like super clean and like have a real tight punchline. Whereas Canel like it's got like more of a rambling style, but it like can hit in a funny way that mine like almost never does. I think it's going to be like a yin and yang. Plus he's just, that's my guy and he's fun as fuck to, you know, stay up all night and getting drunk with. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I think it's it's a perfect two on two partnership as well. Like I'd love to see that happen at some point, but I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. We already got the name. Run the booze. I love that as well. That's amazing. I'm guessing you're um you're also a big Run the Jewels fan, then. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's one comment I get almost more than anything, and I get that even more on like the penultimate pages and stuff like that because people who go to there like you know battle fans aren't like guaranteed to know who lp is and run the jewels are but like people that listen to like penultimate music like are almost definitely going to notice that i look exactly like this dude lp no relation that i know of but he uh he himself has acknowledged that we we do bear a striking resemblance it's pretty pretty wild and i've been listening to him for like over 15 years like fantastic damage came out you know so long ago i think that was like 2002 or something i've been listening to him since then and it's yeah. it's so dope that he's like killing it in his like i guess he's in like his 40s now and it's like at the height of his career which is so dope to see definitely man and like they're for me they're one of the best live acts that i've ever seen like this yeah they're i haven't so seen good. them live yet but i'm dying to yeah, I, I got lucky, and, and uh, do you know what? I actually saw them without knowing that I was going to see them as well, which made it even better. But Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's dope. They, they were at like a small festival over here in, in London not too long ago. It was amazing. But That's dope. Yeah, Killing Mike is incredible too. That, that flow and that cadence, it's like nothing like it. Definitely. But um, like... I've been, apart from battle rap related questions, I've been asking a few music related questions and then finishing up with just three extremely random questions, to be honest. But sure. off the, it's a tough one as well, but off the top of your head, if you had to pick your three all time favorite albums, what are you going with? And this is hip hop or just anything? Anything at all. Okay. There's three that, like, I feel like I always qualify, like, all my answers to this shit. Like, I don't know if this is really the answer, but what comes to mind is, so, you know, this is another one of those. But as far as hip-hop goes, like, a huge influence on me and just, like, the way I, like, think about delivering a punchline or structuring a bar to make it, like, more amusing or more clever or whatever is MF Doom. Um, I know, like, a lot of people think his his music hasn't aged well. I disagree, personally. Uh, But... One of my favorite albums. It's almost impossible to fit, uh, pick a favorite album from him, but one I really love is Vaudeville Villain uh, under his Victor Vaughn alias, which is like I think maybe his yeah, only okay. his, like, his second like real solo outing. I think I think he did the first MF Doom album, Operation Doomsday, and then I think he pretty quickly after that did the Victor Vaughn one. And I just like the production on there he didn't produce it but uh it's just super tight and like he's like at his most like dense lyrically there and just i love the persona he's like playing like a you know a younger character who's kind of more ignorant so it's like it's like bringing the doom style merged with like the more like gritty just ignorant like violent shit that i like listening to also it reminds me of like it's if like mf doom was listening to like jadakiss or something like that which is i love that album that was a long answer. Um, these other two will be shorter. And it's completely <laughs> other genre. Uh, I, I love this band called Ratatat. It's like instrumental music. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm aware of them. used to be more popular. Um, they, I don't think they've been active for like the last few years, but they've got this album called Classics, and it's like aptly named. It's just like, it's basically just ear candy. Like if I'm like in a bad mood, I'll just put that shit on and just, you know, it's like therapeutic in that way it's not there's nothing too deep to it nothing too complex to it it's just like a bunch of like back-to-back like real nice sounding like groovy songs so i love that album too and then um this one comes out of left field but and i I don't really like dig him as a person or anything but i do like a lot of his music beck b-e-c-k yeah 
Guero, which I just, you know, again, it's just like, there's no skips there. Like, and the songs are weird and they're funky and they're strange, you know, weird rhythms, weird sounds, but like all super catchy and just like earworms, just like a fun album to listen to. Like, those are the kinds of shit that I'll listen to when I'm like kind of overloaded on like the, you know, because the main shit I listen to is hip hop. And, you know, if it's not hip hop with vocals, it's, you know, some instrumental like Alchemist beats or so. That's like the main shit I'll listen to day to day. But if I need a break from that, the rat a tat and the back, that kind of shit, like just feel good, you know? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of all three of those albums, man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. And it's, there are three albums that haven't come up with anybody else yet. So it's always nice. get, good to get a mixture too. But yeah, in terms of, you said that, you know, a lot of people say MF Doom's music hasn't aged well. Like, I couldn't agree less. Like, Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I think where that comes from is, and I, I get this, like a real, something battle rappers are always thinking about and battle rap fans is like, people if you something's phrased in a way that's like not true to life like you wouldn't say it that way or like you just say something weird or like i think a lot of battle rap fans have an aversion to sh- you know just rapping about some random weird shit and like saying a line that's kind of silly you know or whatever and i think for that reason a lot of you know so if dooms like get more cheese than doritos cheetos or fritos some people like hear that line and they're like ah well, that's just stupid but in context, like, I, that's from the song Accordion, from Mad Villainy, which I also love. Yeah. And, like, there's just so many little gems in there. It's, like, it's not about, you know, picking apart the lines. It's about, like, the ethos of this weird character and, like, just all this clever shit he's rambling about. But I get that it's just not for everyone. But for me, I agree. Like, it's aged immaculately. I can listen to any of those albums. I mean, not any of them. He's got a couple misses in there, probably in the more recent end, but definitely like it's age like fine wine for me but i get why you know i get why people might have you know they just think about you know music differently it doesn't fit the vibe of what of what they want to listen to you know something maybe more serious or more you know streamlined more you know less less uh you know dusty crackly sounding you know cleaner and i get the, i get all that yeah i completely agree man and uh i'm a huge mf doom fan myself too so just before we get on to the next question, I've just had the best WhatsApp message I've ever had. So my Good. my mum has never watched battle rap in her life. She has just found her first ever rap battle, and it's yourself okay. versus Craft D while I've got what? yourself on the show. How did that happen? So we're we're fr- I'm from Hereford, which is a about 45 minutes or so from Shrewsbury. Right. So I think she's noticed that something happened in Shrewsbury and clicked on that. But That's incredible. Man, that's, yeah. a, that's a dope battle to start with. That's a good introduction. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's what a crazy coincidence that she just texted you that now. That's, that's insane. Shout out to Craft D. Don't flop champion now. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, she said to me she enjoyed the ginger jokes and... Uh, so my stepdad thought that the Eastern Bloc politics against the title Red Flag was very clever. Oh, see, I didn't even, I wouldn't have made that connection. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. You got some new nope. fans, man. But um, nope. yeah. And like with yourself then, so is there, in terms of like live acts that you've seen personally or like concerts that you've been to, who would you say is the best live act that you've come across? There's been a lot. I've seen Ratatat a bunch of times. The band we just talked about all were amazing. I've never seen a Doom show and I'm kind of glad I've heard that he's pretty underwhelming live if he even shows up. Um, one that just sticks out in my memory, I'm from Baltimore, right? So there was a music festival that would come there every year for the longest time. It was through Virgin Mobile. It was called Virgin Fest. And one year at Virgin Fest, the lineups were always like absurd. It was like Coachella type lineups, but just, you know, fewer acts. And Wu-Tang, I saw, like was almost, you know, every conceivable member that could possibly be there that was, you know, like living, they were all there. And it was, you know, an unforgettable experience being like, I think I was maybe sophomore year of high school back when everybody is in there, you know, especially if you're my age, you know, late twenties, you were, that was your peak Wu-Tang listening period probably. And it was, 
so impactful, unforgettable. So I'll have to go with that one. Nice. Yeah, it's, that's a good choice. And, um, like, have you got any kind of lesser-known musicians that you're a big fan of that myself or the listeners might not be aware of? Oh, I'm sure I have at least a few. Um, I listen to like a lot of, you know, because a lot of times I'm just working and I can't really listen to stuff with, you know, too much going on vocally or I'll get distracted. So I listen to a lot of instrumentals and uh, there's a few people like from the Maryland area that are really dope and slept on. Like this dude, Kev Brown makes amazing beats. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's another dude from a totally different part of the country, but like similar kind of vibe, like can kick that's can kick with a K. Uh, okay. I think it's one, one word and his beats, like he's kind of affiliated with like, I think he knows like Mad Lib or, you know, kind of grew up around him or something. And you can see like, it's a totally different style, but you could maybe get the influence and, you know, it's just random producers, like producers in general get slept on. So, you know, I, I wish more people were tuned into who was producing what. Um, and I think it's getting more like that, which is dope. Alchemist is like my favorite producer ever, but I know a lot of people know about him, but yeah, like check out those dudes. Ken kick Kev Brown. There's a lot of like really good beat makers that if you just go on, like if you just search like Kev Brown on YouTube, and then just like start clicking around, you'll go down like a dope ass rabbit hole and, you know, probably hear some local producers you never would have heard of. Yeah. So Ken Kick, I've not heard of. Um, however, Kev Brown, I'm a big fan of as well. So that's cool. Yeah, he's got some of the endless bass lines. Like he can make an amazing bass line on like an MPC. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I've got, he's got an album called I Do What I Do, right? I think so, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've got that yeah, on volume raps somewhere. Too, but what I really love him for is the beats, but he does rap too. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's – he's yeah, big Kev Brown fan as well. Yeah, man, check but... out Can Kick though, because Can Kick is like incredibly prolific. He's got like so many just straight beat tapes, which is dope. So if you're like – you know, if you like one, then you can just cop a bunch and then you just have hours of shit to listen to. Nice. Yeah, I'll definitely check, check him out. But – um. Yeah, I mean we're we're gonna have to finish soon. We're nearly at uh, nearly at quarter past. But like the three random questions. So, are you a big sports fan, and do you have a favorite sports team? I think like for battle rap by battle rap standards, I'm probably like among the least you know knowledgeable or interested in sports. But you know, I'd have to go with the Baltimore Orioles. You know, just being from there, there would have been a time when I would have said the Baltimore Ravens, but there's too many. Too many asterisks I have to put next to that one. So I'm going to go with the Baltimore Orioles. I grew up in the Cal Ripken era, which was iconic. He was like, you know, this beloved local hero and, you know, incredible player. Met him, which was dope. Um, but, yeah, that'll that'll be the team. And they got, I always liked the way, like, their logo looked and everything too. So it's a good yeah. one all around to go with that. But I really don't know much of anything about sports. I, like, loosely pay attention, but – you know, I, I wasn't devastated in the way so many people were that uh, they're all kind of canceled right now. I feel terrible, you know, for all the people impacted by that. But that wasn't really going to affect my day to day, crazily enough. No, no, that's fair enough. And uh, I see what you mean. I love the like the font on the the Orioles jersey. Yeah, it's stuff, dope. So. And the logo, the bird logo is dope, too. It's all just like super clean. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's cool. But um if you could pick anywhere in the world for your next like holiday or trip abroad, where would you go first? That's tough because I have a few on my list. So it's really between like somewhere like Greece or maybe like Thailand. Cause I love just like a luxurious, just beach vacation every now and then I did one not that long ago, like right before the pandemic um, in February, we were in Mexico, which was amazing, but Nice. I want to do like a bigger trip. So I'm thinking like probably I'll get over to Thailand as soon as I can. That just looks like paradise from what I've seen. And I've never been like in Asia period. So I'll go with that. Yeah, I've, I've been to both. Um, I went to Thailand for about four weeks last summer and kind of went on a mini backpacking trip. But definitely go Thailand over Greece. All right. There we go. Yeah, definitely. Decided. But um the the final one and this one has brought up some some shocking answers so far to be honest but 
if um, you could pick one sweet and one savoury, but what are the go-to munches? Mm, that's a good one. Um, geez, my, my taste has changed so much over the years. So for the, uh, actually, yeah, I think I got this. You know, the old me would have said in the savory department, these are only good for munchies too, by the way. Those like twisty, I don't know if you have them in the UK. There's like these spicy, like Frito things that are like spirals. They're like the ultimate munchie food, but I'm kind of, kind of past that. I've sort of matured past that. I'm going to go with like a, a pretzel chip, peanut butter combo. Like that's, that's quite a snack right there. That's my savory department, like pretzel, peanut butter type thing. And then sweet, I'm going to go with like a cookies and cream ice cream, man. That's, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Great show. I like it. No, it's uh, some of the better answers to be fair. So I like I'm that. A man a of taste. What can I say? Definitely. But no, I mean, apart from that red flag, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on. I know you're super busy, but is there any links that you want in the description once the video drops? I'll, uh, I'll obviously put some links for. Yeah, great. So, yeah, man, I'll, I'll put you, I'll send you the, um, there's this dope site called Song Whip that just puts like, it just takes every link there, you know, to any platform for a given album and puts them all together. So I'll definitely send you that for what we just dropped. And then, you know, if you got Apple Music, iTunes, you know, SoundCloud, whatever, it's all on there. So Perfect happy days but yeah thank you very much for your time man it's been really fun to chat with you and uh i hope you stay safe over there anyway appreciate it man you too brother take it easy you too take care man bye-bye